Good morning, morning Ecos family. Happy Sunday, Ecos family. We are so glad that you joined us this morning for a worship experience. Yes, guys, I don't know about you guys, but I've been loving this series yes. so, so much. How about you, Karen? It's been a game changer. I can't wait to continue. So let's go inside. Woo, let's go. Join us in a time of worship. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. We're going to sing about breakthrough. Come on, let's sing. You are the undefeated one, my life and my salvation. When the wicked, my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled in.
And every time that you come through, you're always faithful. We'll speak of your goodness. We'll tell of what you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll declare this testimony. sing this if I'm not dead you're not done <laughs> greater things are still to come oh I believe it if I'm not dead you're not done yeah 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 greater things are still to come oh I believe say hey, if I'm not dead you're not done get up get up get up get up greater things are still to come Oh, I believe it. If 
I'm not there, you're not done. Get up, get up, get up, hey. Greater things are still to come. Come on, oh, I'll see it again. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done yet. Greater things are still to come. Oh, oh, I believe. Oh, I Talking to you, 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 you. If I'm not dead, you're not done. There's greater things still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Yeah. Greater things still to come. Oh, I believe. Oh, I I'm talking to your faith right now. 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 Get up. I'm talking to your faith right now. I'm talking to your faith right now. Talking to your faith right now. I'm talking to your faith right now. Get up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I say get up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, get up, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, get up, yeah, 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 yeah. Get up in the name, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, get up. Do you believe that greater things are still to come? We come in this moment, right now, to declare that no matter what you're facing, this is your dead to life moment. In the name of Jesus, this is your dead to life moment. In the name of Jesus, I'm gonna ask Brandy to pray the prayer of faith that you would get up in the name of Jesus. I was getting ready this morning and I heard this Lord say, lift up your head and he didn't say it nicely he didn't say it gently he said it forcefully he said lift up your head I know that there's a lot going on and I know that the news is everywhere and the people are discouraged but lift up your head today in the name of Jesus we declare that hope arise in your heart that hope rises in your city, that hope rises in your homes in the name of Jesus. Lift up your head. See the salvation of the Lord. See the goodness of the Lord. See his hand at work. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Even when we don't see it, you're working, God. Even when we don't feel it, you're working, God. So, Father, we lift up our heads. We look to you this morning, and we declare that hope arises in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our families, in our schools, and in our cities, God. We declare that hope rises in our government, God. We declare that hope rises in our churches, God. We declare that hope rises in our neighborhoods and in our parks and in our cities and our city halls. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. That's it. 
Even when I don't see you working, even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see you you're working, and even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never see it again. Even when I don't see it you're working, even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop. Stop, you never stop. Oh, 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 even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you say, say, say. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Worship your God, yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, you never stop, no, yeah, 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 even when I don't see it, you're working, when I don't feel it, you're working, you never stop, you never stop, you never stop working. Oh, 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 my King, my King, my King, we adore you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Come on, in your homes right now, just open your mouth in thanksgiving and gratitude right now. Come on, uh, shift it in your homes right now. Come on, shift it in your homes right now. Come on, shift it in your homes right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He wants it not just on earth as it is in heaven. He wants it in your home as it is in heaven. He wants it in your home as it is in heaven. He wants it in your home as it is in heaven. Come on, worship him right in your home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, unlock the sound, the sound. You say, what sound? The sound out of your mouth. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. You're at work, you're at work, you're at work, and we love you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, continue to worship him. Even in our giving, come on, continue to worship him. Continue to worship him, even in our giving, come on. Continue to worship him. Worship him in your giving, come on, worship him, worship him. Church, good morning. It's your girl Sophia. I don't know about you, but these last couple months have been quite crazy, and I think a lot of us can agree that they've been challenging. Um, I've been personally in transition um, and in a big shift in my life. I've had to adjust on the fly and think fast on my feet. It doesn't come naturally sometimes, and sometimes transition can take you a little blindsidedly, but I know that in my heart of hearts, my foundation is fully set on the Lord. And that's one of the reasons why my house hasn't shaken or fallen apart. My faith is firmly planted in Him. Let me encourage you with this scripture. It's found in Matthew 7, 24. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house. And yet it did not fall for it was firmly found on the rock. I want to encourage you, if you don't feel firmly planted on the rock, to get firmly planted on the rock. And one of those ways is to just ask Him to be that foundation for you. The winds have blown and the rain has come. And I have been tested and tried, especially in these last couple of months. 
but I encourage you to just continue to open up your heart. One of the ways that I have been challenged personally is to giving, giving sacrificially, giving financially to the kingdom and the works of God. It has made my life so much more firm. I'm not saying it was the answer, but it has definitely made a difference. And I challenge you this morning to do the same thing. If you can, if you're able to, there are four easy ways to give. That's in Venmo, Cash App, Text to Give, and online. And all those you can follow right here on the screen. I appreciate you guys. I hope that you stay strong and stay firm on the foundation. God bless you guys. Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain For the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Every knee will bow before... Let's do that again, come on. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the light. Come on, sing that again. Every knee, every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before every knee. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow. Oh, lift your voice and sing. Set up a throne right here in our homes. We bow before your throne. Every knee will bow. And I choose to confess. Oh, oh, oh. Every knee will bow before the light. Oh, I choose to bow before your throne today. Every knee will bow. For 
the sins of the world His blood breaks the chains Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb Every knee will bow before Him We choose to bow We choose to make you a throne We tear down the altars And the thrones that we've set up The thrones of fear The thrones of finance yeah. The thrones of discouragement The things that we've given a throne We tear it down Oh, take your place right here, right here in our homes. Take your crown right here, right here in our homes. Take a seat right here, right here on my praise. I enthrone you, God. I enthrone you, God. Take a seat right here, right here on your throne. Take your crown right here, right here on my praise. We make a throne right here, right here in our home. We'll make you a throne. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're the king of kings. But I want you to be my king. Yeah, yeah. You're the Lord of Lords But right here, right now, I make you my Lord Yeah, yeah, yeah I give up control I hand you my fear My hands are open Take your throne right here There is no one else 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 You're the only one You're the only one David would say in Psalms, God, keep me as the apple of your eye and let me rest underneath the shadow of your wing. And yes, it's poetic, but what David was really saying in that moment, the translation was, keep me as a small man in your eye. And the picture is that when you get close face to face with somebody and you look in, your eye, in their eyes, you can see the reflection of yourself in their eye. And God, David was saying to God, I want to be so close to you. I got to get face to face with you so that I can't just see you. But as I get face to face with my king, I begin to see my own reflection. I, I begin to see myself as you see me, not as the world has said, not even what I believe, not what my experience has spoken over my life, not what I've done, not what I've seen. But I begin to see myself as the righteousness of God in Christ. And it happens when I get face to face. God, keep me as the apple of your eye. Keep me under the shadow of your wing. I want to be covered. I want to be covered. I want to be covered. Nobody else but you. I've got to be close to you. I've got to be close to you. I take my eyes off of everything that's become big in my life and I lift up my voice and I say magnify the Lord with me I take the magnifying glass of my life and I take it off of everything that's happened this week everything that's happened during this quarantine and I put it on my God yes he's been big but I'm taking the magnifying glass of my life and I'm putting it on a big God I'm shifting my perspective I want to be close to you I want to be close to you Nothing else will do Nothing else will do, yeah Oh, nothing else will do Nothing else Nothing else 
Nothing else will do I just want you Nothing else Nothing else Nothing else will do I just want you Nothing else Nothing else Nothing else will do Come on, can you sing that? I just want you, yeah Nothing else Nothing else, nothing else. Come on, make that your song. Sing it out by yourself. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. One more time we sing. One last time. I just want nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Play out before the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You say, what are you doing? What's next? Why are you stalling? Why are you wasting time? No. Not a store. It's called attention to the only one who deserves it. sitting in, in, in his presence in your home oh your presence is like honey honey your presence is like honey honey Woo. your presence is like honey 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 your presence is like honey 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 Lord we make room, we make room, we make room, we make room. Yeah, yeah. We make room, we make room, we make room, we make room. My king, my king. Oh, my king, my king. Oh, we make room, we make room, we make room, we make room. Jesus, Jesus, oh, we make room, we make room, we make room, my say, and our heart is turned toward you, our gaze is upon you, our heart is turned toward you. Real simple, our gaze is upon you, our heart is turned toward you, our gaze is upon you, oh our heart is turned toward you, and our gaze is upon you, our 
gaze is upon you, our gaze is upon you, our gaze is upon you, our gaze is upon you, yeah. Our heart is turned toward you, yeah, yeah. There is nothing like turning your gaze towards the Lord, like, like turning your attention and your focus, giving him every fiber of your being in a moment. He can change everything. Ooh, stay right there, stay right there. Oh, you can change everything. I sense him coming into homes and hearts right now. And he's shifting your atmosphere right now. He's lifting and evicting heaviness. In the name of Jesus, loose your hold off of homes. Heaviness and darkness and depression and this weighty cloak. Be loosed from the houses of God's people. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord. The entrance of your word brings light. Oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my Jesus. Sweet Savior, sweet Savior, sweet Savior, sweet Savior. Sweet Savior, sweet Savior, sweeter than the honeycomb. You are, you are, you are sweeter than the honeycomb. Oh, you are. Oh, you are. I just want to release this word right in this moment. It's not going to take long just because I sense like the Lord wants to surgically implant it in your spirit. I'm calling to those who have been misplaced. Today's part two of misplaced and today's message is entitled Drifted or Dropped. Drifted or Dropped. Nothing else will do. I just want you. In Luke, the 15th chapter, we find a very familiar passage of Scripture. It says, now the tax, collectors, the tax collectors and the sinners were all gathering around. By the way, are you ready for the word? Are you ready for the word? Come on, say, give me the word. Give me the word. Give, him, give me the word. Put it in the comments. Say, give me the word. We say this not for hype. We say this to posture to the, towards the Lord that our hearts are open to receive the incorruptible seed of the word. You're not going to throw it on just some ground that's not even listening to what you say. No, Lord, we say, give us the word. Give us the word. Give us the word that proceeds out of your mouth. Verse 2 goes on to say, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there is more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Goes on to say, or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, glory, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me. I have found my lost coin. 
In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels. There's rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Here, very quickly, I'm not going to belabor the point with historical data and the layers of contextual preaching that usually comes with a well-crafted homiletic homily. I'm going to release this prophetically to every person who has felt misplaced, unseen. There's a missing person's alert that's gone out. And the father is calling for his sons and daughters. What does it mean to be misplaced? It is different than displaced. Displaced means you are forced to up and leave from what is customarily known as home. But misplaced means you're lost. We can't seem to find you. Where are you? Here in the scripture, there's two parables that Jesus gives. Very quickly, one is talking about the lost sheep. This one I call drifted. 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 Was walking with the Lord, steady on the path, and somehow, some way along the journey, you just started drifting. It wasn't that necessarily you turned away from the Lord, didn't love him, didn't, didn't want to follow him. But you began to maybe play, play into the approval of man more than what the voice of the Lord was saying to you. And you found yourself just drifting. Drifting, you see, just, just, just wandering off. Good ideas, good plans, but not from the voice of the shepherd. Drifted. Some of you have wrestled with getting in the right place because you've battled with the sense of being misplaced. Now, the thing about being, about having drifted, is that we usually drift by our own volition. We don't always drift with intentions to drift, but we, we drift by our own volition to kind of do our own thing. Thinking that just one choice won't make that big of a difference, will it? But over a course of time, that one degree of drifting can turn into such a wide gap. So here you are today. As a father has been calling places, you find yourself misplaced. Where am I? I drifted. I drifted. I drifted. I got to talk real with you now between, between you and God in your homes. You, you, you got to be honest with yourself. If you're, if you're ever going to shift out of the place of drifting, you got to be real honest with you. You got to be real open and honest with you about what causes you to drift. What causes you to take your eyes off the Lord? What, what causes your ears to perk up? That's something easier, is it? is it? Is it ease that has caused you to drift? Is it convenience that has caused you to drift? What has caused us to drift? I hear the Father saying, places to a people that have, have, have become misplaced and there's a missing person alert going out. And he's coming for you. He's coming for you. Today, he's reaching into your home right now because he is done living without you. He'd rather die on an old rugged cross than live without you. He's over living without you. He wants you, so he's coming for you. The drifted one. He says, will not the shepherd who has lost one sheep Leave the 99 and go after the one. I wonder if you could lift your hands and say, I'm the one. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. 
I know we don't usually tell you to say that in church. I know we don't usually, everybody else is the, is the one. But, but I want you to think about the fact that he came for you. He's coming after you. He's reaching out to you. I'm not even talking about you. If you said the sinner's prayer, great. If you work at church, great. If you volunteer your time, great. But if you know your heart has drifted because you can do all of those things and check the box and still be drifted, he's coming for you today. And here's what he does in his love. He picks you up, throws the sheep over his shoulders and says, let me carry you. I know your gauges are off right now. I know you're not perceiving right right now. I know you're not sensing right right now. I know your compass is twisted right now. So I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna rely on you to hear my voice. I, I'm gonna pick you up and carry you. I want you to know there's safety in Jesus. I want you to know some of you have been trying to figure it out so scientifically, but the love of the Father has eliminated your science and he's eliminated your calculation. He said, let me pick you up, let me pick you up. I'm gonna pick you up and put you on my own shoulders. I'm gonna carry you right out of this. I'm gonna carry you right through this. I know you worried about getting it right and getting it wrong and going the wrong place or staying in the right place, but the Father said, let me just carry, let me carry you, let me carry you. When I carry you, you're gonna land in the right spot. When I carry you, you're gonna land in the sweet spot. Just let me put you on my shoulder and carry you. That's if you are drifted. Now I wanna talk to the dropped folks and I'm closing. Cause those are the ones who often are the most hurt, been dropped dropped by parents, dropped by a devastating circumstance, dropped by friends, dropped by a pastor, dropped by a brother, dropped by a sister, dropped by life circumstances. Just feel like you've been dropped. This woman had 10 coins and all of a sudden she couldn't find where the one coin went. And yet the scripture says that she went to sweep the house. I don't sweep my walls. I don't sweep my ceilings. I sweep my floors. This coin was down as low as it could be. But Jesus came for those who have been dropped. Jesus came for those who have been dropped. Not for you to bolster excuses, but to be your redeemer and to change your narrative. Yes, I was dropped, but I'm more than just dropped. Don't get it twisted because even though I'm dropped, my value didn't change. That coin that was on the floor was still worth the same amount that the coins that were in her jar were worth. Your drop doesn't diminish your value. Jesus will come right after you, right where you are because you are worth it to him. So today, if you've been dropped, Woo. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The scripture says that he, that she swept and she turned on the lights. <laughs> He's bringing you into the light. And let me tell you, unlike what you may have heard in church before, I'm here to let you know the light of heaven is never to be used as an accomplice to shame. When the lights come on, the light is coming to bring you health. When the lights come on, the light is coming to make you better. And so the lights are coming on. You find yourself realizing things that you didn't see before. Have you been that way in the last few weeks? In this kind of still reopening situation, noticing that, hey, I, I don't... I don't respond like I used to, or I didn't even know that about myself. You know what that is? That's the light coming on. Because Jesus is coming after those who have been dropped. He's coming after those who feel like they've been orphaned. He's coming after those that feel like they've been just left to fend for themselves. I'm talking, hallelujah, I can see a man right now who's been on his own since his early teenage years. And I'm telling you, sir, hallelujah, the Father wants to lift that heavy load off of you because you are valuable. And even though you felt dropped, the drop did not depreciate your value. Look what he does. He clears everything and everybody out. I don't know about you, but when my mama would clean, coming from a boy's perspective, 
when my mama would clean, I used to hate it. Why? Because she dug out the stuff that I thought I had hid well. <laughs> she dug out the stuff I didn't want to know. She would dig it all out into the, she would dig it all out into a pile. And then she'd say, now, now, put that in the dirty clothes, put that in the trash. Why you still got you ain't had the she just go through all this. But Jesus has a way of pulling it all out. But when she finished doing what she did, my room seemed bigger. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. But it seemed like I had more room where I was. Why? Because he cleaned out the clutter and God is making space in your life right now. Because he's cleaning out the clutter. So right now, I want to pray for you. First, right now, I want to pray for you. If you feel like you've drifted and Jesus is no longer priority in your life, he's not the Lord of your life, or maybe you've never placed faith in him before, I want to pray for you because right now is your moment to make a change forever. He came to rescue you. He came to shift your life. So would you pray with me right now? Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and that I need a savior. I'm asking you to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. I believe that you died and that you rose again for my sin. Change me forever. I want to be just like you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen, if you have been wrestling with feeling misplaced you feel like you don't belong you feel rejected you feel abandoned let me tell you the Holy Spirit right now is giving you a gift for every person that has been misplaced he's giving you this listen one he's sweeping through your life because he's giving you a clean slate no longer will the past pain and rejection of the past be in your ear and right upon your future. He's giving you a clean slate. The sweeping signifies a clean slate. Number two, write this down. He's lighting up your life. He's bringing insight and revelation. Clean slate, revelation. Why? Because he loves you. Because you're worth it. So now I'm going to pray with you that your life would be aligned into a new place and that the shame of being misplaced would be utterly removed from your life forever. Lord Jesus, I pray for my brother and my sister right in their homes right now that this nagging thing that has tried to weigh on them about being misplaced, not, fitting like, not feeling like they fit in anywhere, being amongst people and feeling looked over, that people can walk right past them and not really see them. Lord, I pray that you break it off of their life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray for fresh vision, fresh wine, fresh hope to be released in their hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now listen, I believe this week is a prophetic turning point week for you and your family. Hear me. Steward the word of the Lord in your heart. Come on, Ecos. Steward the word of the Lord in your heart. And to our extended Ecos family all around the nation. Steward the word of the Lord in your heart. And now listen, let's connect some more. If you prayed that prayer, text the word LIVE to the number on your screen. Let's connect. Let's partner in prayer and agreement. Our team will pray with you. We are excited to see what God is going to do in your life. And then we want you to jump right on the Instagram Live right after this experience. Right after this experience, we're going to be on Instagram Live. We're going to talk with some of our team members. And we're going to talk about what it's like to feel misplaced and how God can shift you into the right place for his glory. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Wow, Ecos family, what another life-changing message. What an amazing time in worship. Amen, amen, it truly was. Now, you guys have to stay connected. So hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and turn on the notifications. And join us right now on Instagram, because we're going live with me, Pastor Tim, and a special guest. So head on over and I'll see you in a second. See you there. Let's go.